Welcome back, everyone. We are back in the kitchen with a chef who's not only a culinary artist, but also a recording artist. That's right, he sings while he cooks, and he's here to throw down his amazing orange soy braised short ribs that are delicious. Welcome to our kitchen. Well, you didn't try it yet, so how do you know that? Roger Mookie, because I can tell Roger. I can tell they're delicious. Been in the kitchen, testing everything out. He knows. Yeah. You know what, I, I know my way around the kitchen, so I know if something's gonna be good or not. That's right, and I know when they're fighting for space at the counter, it's gonna be good. Exactly. Jordan Cam on the counter, good. Larissa good. and Ken, you guys awesome. dig in. This thank is you, thank really, you. Delicious. Awesome. So we're going to jump right into this. And, yeah. and one of the keys to making your short ribs so yummy oh, wow. is the beautiful soy glaze sort of sauce yes. that you make with it. Yes, so how yes. do we make that? Okay, it's very, very simple. In a pot here, let's get this heated up. Yeah, it's here. hot. So in this pot, we have some soy sauce. You okay. Low sodium soy sauce if you like. We have some orange juice. Nice. Mm. Got some chicken stock. So, so far, very easy to make. Very easy. Some honey. I like honey. Honey is like really good and all kinds of things. Nature's candy. I love it that really you're is. using like white sugar for this. That's so, that's so great. It's honey is awesome. Mm -hmm. And it has just more robust, round mm -hmm. flavor yeah. to it, right? And blonde miso. Blonde miso. Oh, you can use no. dark miso as well, but uh, the blonde miso is a little bit more delicate flavor, right? Yeah, and you whisk that together. Now you're you using, whisk that. You're blonde using honey, but given yep. that you are... Um, from Canada, like our camera note <laughs> Could you use a maple syrup? You could, it would change the flavor very distinctly. It would. It's a significant different thing. I think this would work better. Okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. Now a Canadian turning down his maple no, no, syrup. Wow. Oh, you could do it, but you know, I'm just saying. Roger, I don't know if they're gonna let you back in the country. <laughs> you might be we'll stuck here. We'll see immigration here. says. Yeah. <laughs> so how long does it take for that miso sauce to come together? Uh, maybe like three, four minutes. You really just want the miso to break down. It's not like super amount of liquid. So you just want to heat it through and get it going. Okay, and that's what we have over there. Now, over yep. here in our Dutch oven, we've already browned our short ribs, yep. and we've removed them. Now, in that beautiful pot with all the fond, we start mm -hmm. to build flavor. Build flavor. So, celery, onion, and garlic. That's very, it? Oh, sorry, this is shallots. Okay. Shallots, celery, garlic. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple. We want to start sweating that all together, getting the flavors coming out of it. And you don't even chop them up. It's like big Just rough cuts. Just break it down, yeah, break it down. Because you notice here, you don't see all that stuff in the, mm -mm. Right. the braise, right? So it's just the meat and then whatever you want on the side. So this makes it easy to pull out. Okay. But right. you still get all the flavor, yeah? Right, building those flavors. And so for how many minutes do you think? I'd say maybe four or five minutes. That's it. You get a little color on it, it softens, you draw some of the sweetness out. Okay. The natural flavor, the celery, the garlic, the oils get working. Beautiful. You pull that fawn off the bottom there. Then you take your short ribs. That we've already put, browned. You put those back in. I like to kind of lean them up. Nice. Right? So I can't stop eating these. I know, they're so <laughs> good. I can't stop. It they're tastes so good, right? Mm. Really good. It's really simple too. Okay, so that's in there. We have some of this sauce already reduced. Ooh, Throw it on the top. Oh, yummy. Let Woo! it bubble. Oh, look at that smoke. Wow. Yep. wow. Then we're gonna cover it up. Okay. okay. Perfect, just like that. Cover it up. We're gonna throw it in a low oven, 325 or so, 300. For how long? A couple hours, two, three hours. You want to soften up and just gently go, right? So low and slow. Now, yep. while you're doing that, while you're doing a little swap out and you get this all set, I want to tell everybody a new season of Man Fire Food is coming out again yes. on May 22nd. We've got a little clip from the premiere of this season, so let's take a look at that right now. Okay, that's good. We're raising the bar and turning up the heat in Texas, firing up two unique rigs to take meats to extraordinary culinary heights. First, I'm fanning the flames in Fort Worth. Light it up. With the seventh generation cattle rancher who is breaking away from the herd by serving whole hog barbecue. We got like 250 pounds of meat roughly here, pork on pork on pork. Then I feel the heat in Houston. Fire all over the place <laughs> with a massive meat machine. Spinning pork and chicken for taco time. Look at that, loaded with meat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a fun job. It's a pretty fun job, yeah. I got to spend a lot of time in the gym off time, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of brisket and warm. Well, and, I think we feel your pain around here. <laughs> we feel a lot around here, too. Where's the coolest place you've gone? 
Uh, you know, I really loved going to Jamaica. I really loved going to Hawaii. I oh, went to Hawaii a couple times. Puerto Rico before the floods. Beautiful place, beautiful people, great food. Just, you know, I feel blessed. You know, I get to travel around, eat food for my job. Like I know, and people pay you. And they pay me. Like, <laughs> That's yeah. a wild one. I'd like to taste this. Okay, you want to taste this? So you'll see now the ribs are really, really tender. See that? Mm. They're jiggling. You want to get that on there? You really want it like fall off the bone. Want it to fall off the bone tender, yeah. Is it possible to overcook them? You said like two to three hours, you just. I mean, you don't want to leave it in there for like a day or nothing like that, you know, but you know, it's forgiving a little bit. But once it's barely forgiving, you don't want it to totally break down and turn into mush. You want to hold its form a little bit. Oh, so yeah, grab a fork. Oh my as gosh. good as this looks, the it weight is even better. But it's not done. Then we're gonna just. It's not done. Tear it's some like mint on it. Now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not done, man. <laughs> and we're serving that it on a bed it. of of wilted watercress. Wilted mm, watercress. Really good. A little bit of garlic. Oh my Throw some God. basil on there, garlic. torn as well. <laughs> wilted right watercress sounds like something Yosemite Sam would have said on Bugs Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> wilted watercress. <laughs> watercress. <laughs> right? I'm gonna start using that. A little bit of sesame okay. seeds. There it is. A little nuttiness. Can I can I tell Deb to have a taste now? Roger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good. Go ahead, dig in, everybody. Uh, great, great job, and congrats on this series as well. And you'll find this recipe at HallmarkChannel.com, everybody, and can check out Roger's new album, Eat Your Words. That is available now. <laughs> Love that. Great album. Great in the kitchen, man. You are multi-talented. <laughs>